How many men did it take to cut you down? <clears throat> Just one. Oh. <clears throat> he must have been some kind of monster. <clears throat> he was a woman. <laughs> I think suffering a near-death experience probably changes anyone, and that certainly has changed Sandor Clegane. He's a more thoughtful person than he was when we last saw him. He's probably more aware of his vulnerabilities. He knows how close he came to dying, and he's really thinking about his past in a way that he never had before. Never too late to stop robbing people, to stop killing people, to start helping people. It's never too late to come back. You can feel the very subtle effect that Ray and his community are having on the Hound. And he's starting to see that there's perhaps a different way of living your life. What are you doing here? Well, we're talking about life. You? Protecting the people. The unfortunate, ugly reality is that the kind of pacifism that Ray is preaching is often suicidal when you're in the middle of the kind of world that they're all in. Something sad about the fact that this person who tried desperately to walk away from what he was is being given no real choice but to go full throttle back in the direction of what he really is, which is a killer. This isn't your fight. You shouldn't have to come to Winterfell with me. I shouldn't be asking you. But I need you with me if we're going to beat them, and we need to beat them if you're going to survive. John is not a wildling. John grew up in a castle raised by a noble father, but John has a much easier time with the kind of plain talk that the people north of the Wall resonate with. He died for us. If we are not willing to do the same for him, we deserve to be the last of the free folk. These wildlings that he's convincing are people whose lives he's saved. They're people who've seen the same things he's seen. They are reticent to follow anyone, especially a non-wildling, but they're all smart enough and practical enough to realize that the old rules that governed their existence for hundreds of years are no longer in effect. No. So he does a very good job convincing them, but he has a harder time with Lady Mormont. I served under your uncle at Castle Black. I was his steward. In fact, I, I think we've had enough small talk. Why are you here? We were excited about the prospect of the character, because she's mentioned in passing in the previous season. Do you know this wretched girl? Lyanna Mormont. The Lord Commander's niece. Lady of Bear Island. And a child of 10. And the more we thought about it, John is going to come up against so many old guys with beards in the North that, like, what if she was a tougher audience? It seemed like an inherently fun scene to watch. It also is terrifying, because it's putting a lot of dramatic weight on the shoulders of somebody who needs to be very young. And we're very lucky to have found Bella because she is doing such a great job of just talking smack to these guys who are used to being the heroes who make proclamations. What you have to understand, my lady, is that- I understand that I'm responsible for Bear Island and all who live here. So why should I sacrifice one more moment life for someone else's war? I'll never hurt you, little brother. Don't you know that? Yara does love Tien, and one could argue that she's the only one who's ever really loved him. Yara's always been there for him. She's the only person who tried to rescue him when he was Ramsay's prisoner. I know you've had some bad years. Some bad years? But I'm tired of watching you cower like a beat dog. Drink the goddamn ale. It's a very tough love, though. You know, Yara's not a therapist in our kind of sense of the word. She's not there to, you know, tell him to buck up and everything's going to be OK. If you're so broken that there's no coming back, take a knife and cut your wrists. End it. It's a pretty brutal kind of therapy, but that's who they are. I mean, they're essentially a Viking people. There's not a lot of room for sort of soft and gentle psychology. I think it's the kind of tough love that Thea needed at this point. And when he finally raises his eyes and looks into her eyes, we see a glimpse of the old Theon that had been lost for so long. <laughs>